What was your, sir? This is a Wendy's moment. Story 1. I worked at Walmart for a long time in the hardware department. Had a customer call asking if we sold toilets. I said, like, toilet seats? He said, no, like actual toilets. So I said, sorry, we just sell the seats and replacement parts, no porcelain. He got all huffy and said, Jesus, what is this place? Walmart? I paused for a moment and said, yes sir, it is. Silence for a long moment. Then he said in a little voice, this isn't Home Depot? No sir, you called Walmart. Oh shit, I am so sorry. And he hung up. I laughed my ass off. Reply. At least they were aware enough to apologize. Story 2. Went to drive through at a Wendy's and the person taking the order said welcome to Walmart. I was really confused and I heard laughing and he said I'm so sorry he works there too and was on autopilot. Reply. Missed opportunity for the Uno reverse card. Imagine saying, Sir, this is a Wendy's, as the customer. Reply 2. I got one. I stayed up all night playing Eternal Darkness before a morning shift and I was dead tired when I had to run the register. We had started selling video games and a local game shop owner would purchase some of the more popular titles for resale. One day while he was browsing I started thinking to myself, you know, I really like the way they answer the phone. It's so natural, casual and confident. I could do something like that. The phone rang. Still dead tired, I answered, thank you for calling, video game store name, my name is Bob. How can I help why? I mean, thanks for calling, my store, how can I help you? The assistant manager looked at me like I had three ears. The customer only hesitated for a moment. I don't know if the game store owner heard me. I still die inside when I think of it over a decade later. Story 3. I was in Lowe's one morning right after they opened. There was a woman at the service desk having a complete meltdown yelling and screaming because Lowe's didn't have a licensed contractor there at the store for her to hire. She apparently woke up that morning and decided she needed a deck like that same day and thought she could just go to Lowe's and have someone immediately start building a deck. It was dead so I stood with the cashier listening to the show. They ended up having to call the police to get her to leave. Reply. Sometimes I wonder what it feels like to live every day with that much innate entitlement. The power, unearned confidence must be a little intoxicating, no? Story 4. Work in radio. Got a call on the contest line one time. Yeah, I need a hotel room, said the caller. Okay. How would you like me to help you? Well, book me one. You're aware you called a radio station's contest line, right? Yeah. Don't you book hotel rooms for rock stars when they do a show in town? Book me one, reply. OMG, that's why you can never get through on the contest line. Story 5. I'm a high school teacher in Australia. I had a parent rail me out that I wasn't teaching their daughter how to do her taxes. I'm a history teacher. Reply. I had a parent rail me, means something different where I come from, lol. Story 6. I love when customers trauma dump on me. Okay sir that will be $2.15 inches. Yeah my dog just died and my son was arrested. My mom's house burned down last week too. Oh, would you like a straw? Reply. I just chalk it up to people being lonely. It's especially frequent with older customers. Maybe they just don't have someone to talk to. Reply 2. Yay. I had to convince an old guy that used to come into the dealership and pay for a bunch of shit to have someone to talk to that I'll just go to lunch with him once a week or so to hang out. He had no one left and was burning cash looking for some human interaction. I let him tell his stories and asked questions, and he felt good again. Story 7. I work as a facilities manager for a company with a few hundred locations around the country. Back at the end of 2020 I was having trouble getting in touch with a vendor we had a contract with to do some work around one of our offices. Nothing big. I figured he just ghosted us, so I began looking for another vendor who could take over the work. 
After two months of radio silence, Vendor 1 calls me out of the blue and was clearly very drunk and crying at 1 p.m. on a weekday. Turns out he had gotten COVID, was hospitalized, got blood clots in both legs, and had to have them both amputated. He called me while I was at work and told me his whole life story. I ended up staying on the phone with him for about 30 to 45 minutes and I helped him track down a grief counselor. Hopefully he went. I still wonder how he's doing sometimes. Reply. Oh. My God. You did so well. Reply too. I had a similar, vendor ghosted me, story. Wife and I got married in 2021 right as lockdowns were lifting, so we went for it. Had a videographer who seemed sort of out of it at our wedding. He just followed the photographers around, who did an excellent job. He didn't talk much at all and just seemed distracted. Months go by and my wife checks up on our video progress. Turns out he was going through a rough divorce but he was turning things around and getting to his backlog. No biggie, we give him time and space. Then like six more months go by. We figure, okay this is probably a good time to check in again. Wife goes to his FB page for his business and it's just a freaking minefield of WTF happened? Turns out he murder suicided his ex-wife in front of their kid. The wife's family was going through trying to recover any footage for couples that still had business outstanding with him. We're just, nope, that's okay. Story 8. A man come into my tattoo shop once and asked for a massage with a happy ending. Was like, air this is a tattoo studio not a massage pallor, and he just stood there like, yeah? I know, as if tattooists are synonymous with sexual masseuse. Reply. So, it's like I said. I went to this tattoo shop. All I wanted was a tattoo of a guy getting a happy ending, and they wouldn't do it. Tattooists today are too soft. Ten years ago, you could go into a shop and ask for a donkey show, and they'd ink that right on your gooch. Story 9. Uber Driver. Once had a girl I picked up from a karaoke bar that was obvious upset, distressed. Asked if she was okay. Yeah, I just did karaoke, oh. That's pretty cool. I did a song for my dad that died a year ago. Ah, that's sweet of you. Nothing else was said until I got her home, which was only a couple blocks away. As I pulled in this is what she said. I'm not going to give you a bad rating for this but you could have been more emotionally available for me. I just said, I'm, sorry. And had to stop myself from bursting into laughter. I felt bad for her of course but that was just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard from a passenger. Especially prefacing it with, I'm not gonna give you a bad rating for this but. Second story. Picked up a lady, she was distressed. I asked if I could do anything for her and she said, not unless you can take back the last 40 years of my life. It was a very silent awkward ride. Reply. Every now and then I get people that ordered their ride too early and ask me to wait 15 minutes or come back later. They usually get very huffy when I ask for money. Reply 2. There was one time years ago there was a guy who lived across the street from me whose girlfriend would always just scream at him whenever she was over. One time it was at like 2 a.m. I saw the guy sitting on the curb looking defeated with his head in his hands while the girl would get halfway into a cab, then go back out to yell at him some more. I felt so bad for the poor cab driver, but I kind of hope he charged her an extra idling fee or something. Anyway I finally threw my window open and bellowed out, oh my god break up with her already so I can sleep. I think he finally came to his senses because I never heard her again after that. Story 10. Closing shift at a Starbucks, was like 10 p.m. at night and this couple come inside and walk up to me at the front counter saying, the deli across the street is racist towards white people. I really had no response besides just standing there for a few seconds before saying, Deep, did you want to order something? Reply. Ha. Huh. That just reminded me of a tangential memory of my own, where I was the customer in question. I used to routinely stop at a Starbucks that was next door to a gas station. I'd park at one or the other, then run into both. The Starbucks for coffee, and the gas station for a pack of cigs. I did this nearly every morning for several months. 
One day, I got my wires crossed or something. I'm not sure. But, I walked into the Starbucks, waited in line, and eventually made it to the register, where I said, pack of camel lights, please. The perplexed look on the cashier's face is still burned into my memory, to this day. Then I realized where I was, did a literal face palm, and said, sorry, large black coffee, please, and the cashier laughed her ass off the entire time it took her to pour my coffee. Reply 2. Coffee related since you mentioned it. I get a coffee every day. At lunch I go to a place by work and get an espresso. On the weekends I go to a different place by my house and get a oat milk, lactose intolerant, cappuccino. Been doing this for years. They know my order. One Saturday I mindlessly ordered an espresso. The girl at register said, a what? And had a, did you just cheat on me, face. I fumbled around for the order and just muttered something like I was hung over from last night. Story 11. I work for a CPA office that is in an office park with a couple doctor's offices. One day a guy came in only speaking Spanish, so I grabbed my Spanish-speaking colleague to translate. He talked to the guy in the lobby for a few minutes, then the guy left and my coworker came back and asked if that was a joke or we put someone up to that. Apparently the guy explained that his testicles were extremely swollen and painful. He was looking for one of the doctor's offices and just walked into the first building in the complex. I'm, sir, we do taxes here, not testicles. Reply. You should put that on your business cards. My curiosity would probably get the better of me. Reply 2. No ball busting, just tax breaks. Refunds you'll go nuts over. Our tax prep is swell. Story 12. I was working at McDonald's and this lady said, can I get the Wendy's 4 for 4? I said, ma'am this is a McDonald's, and without a moment's hesitation she replied, indeed it is can I get a Big Mac, reply? Lol. I'll give her points for a smooth recovery. Story 13. Not one specific moment, since it happened all the time when I worked at Ulta. I'm looking for this lipstick, shows me Sephora brand lipstick. We don't sell that, but I can show you something similar. No, I want this specific lipstick, don't you sell it? Well where can I buy it? At Sephora ma'am. Reply. Overhead on my target shift. Wow, I've never been in a Walmart like this. It has a Starbucks. I'm guessing it was drug related. Story 14. Got one. Nice lady walks into the cinema I work in, asks for a ticket yada yada. We start chatting a bit while I ring her up, explain how the cinema works etc. It was a slow day too so I could actually do that, and that's when she asks me what hall to go to. I explain to her she has access to all of them, she can just pick wherever she goes first. Cue this, okay that's great, where's the Barbie movie in though? What do you mean Barbie movie? Lady looks around, realizes things are very fucky. Oh. Oh no. Oh. I see it too now. Yeah this isn't this kind of cinema. Let me reimburse you. Turns out she literally managed to miss every DVD rental case, the posters and interior deco of the porn cinema she walked into. Edit. I am surprised at the amount of you that didn't know porn cinemas are a thing actually. I thought they were a common thing, granted a dying one but that they still existed. Story 15. Delivered two large pizzas to a guy's apartment at 10 a.m. on a Sunday. When I got there, he proceeded to say, my girlfriend just dumped me. I slowly backed away and said I had more deliveries to do. Reply. It was a Sunday morning. We were reading the paper and I said, oh, my god. I think the Eagles could clinch the NFC East. And she said that we're done. Story 16. This story is gonna show my age for a few reasons, but when I was about 12 or 13, I saved up my allowance and neighborhood yard work money to finally afford the newest iPod, the ones that could play videos as well. I wanted to make sure they had it at the store before I got my parents to drive me there, so I opened the phone book, found the Apple store, and called them. Guy at Apple Store, hello? Me. Hi do you have the iPod video in stock? 
Guy. Uh. This is an Apple store. Like, crunch crunch? I had called the gift shop at an apple orchard. Story 17. I worked in a local cafe, newsstand, convenience store type spot. We also had a Ticketmaster outlet for a bit. Our small town had an annual concert that usually ran two or three nights. It was really popular with the local folks, so it brought in a lot of foot traffic with people buying tickets. My boss was honestly a small business mastermind. That was the extent of our involvement, we sold and printed gate passes. On night one of the event, I was closing the store as usual, at 10 p.m. An irate woman called wanting to file a noise complaint about the concert. I was like, ma'am, you must have the wrong number, this is local cafe. She insisted that she was filing an official noise complaint and demanded to speak to the owner right now, 10 p.m. on a Friday? Yeah, he's not here. He also isn't the police and doesn't deal with noise complaints. Also, it's only 10 p.m., and this concert has been widely advertised for months. She then went on a wild rant that we needed to do something about the noise since we sold tickets. She wouldn't let me off the call and was going berserk. I told her I was going to disconnect since we had nothing to do with the event or the noise. She called back multiple times, and finally I just let the phone ring, was still ringing when we locked up. Ma'am are you okay? Reply. Narrator. As it turns out, she was not okay, at all. Hey, stop. You're cool. Subscribe for more. Yo.